Hi, my name is Ryan Stewart, and I'm a developer evangelist for Adobe. If you've spent time with the Playbook Simulator, or if you've watched some of the Playbook videos, you've seen that the swipe events make up a huge part of the interaction model on the device. Most of these are global events that developers don't have control over and can't override. If you swipe from the left to the right side, you'll switch applications that are open on the device currently. Swiping from the left-hand corner will always bring up the keyboard. If you swipe from the bottom, you can minimize the application, and on the simulator from the right-hand corner you'll be able to change the orientation by swiping. But there's one area where developers do have control, and that's here at the top bezel. If you look at it, and kind of the way that default applications on the device use it, if you swipe down from the top, you usually bring up a menu. So if I swipe down from here, I get the settings menu. You can use this in your own application to create either default interactions like a menu, or maybe some unique custom interactions based on that bezel. The first one we'll look at is the swipe down event. So I'm going to load the application I've got here uh, called Pintly, and Pintly is a beer recommendation service at pintly.com. So you can go rate beers and it'll then give you a list of beers that you should try. And I've wired up a menu here, so if I swipe down from the top bezel, it'll bring up a menu. And if I swipe again, it'll hide that menu. And the code for this interaction is really, really straightforward. So let me go to Flash Builder really quick. And here's the top menu class that I've got going. And all I have to do is listen for the QNX application event dot swipe down event on this menu item. And you can see that I've listened for it here on the QNX application singleton. That's how you register these events is via QNX application dot QNX application. So once that event is listened for, I can call this swipe down method. And you'll see that all I'm doing is checking to see if the menu is hidden or not. If it's hidden, I'm going to show it. And if it's not, I will hide it. Or if it already is shown, I will hide it. And I'm doing that just using the default tween classes here that come with the Playbook SDK, so pretty straightforward. But there's also another kind of cool way to use the events from that top bezel. Because in addition to the swipe down method, which is just a pretty much straightforward, you know, we're going to swipe from the top of the bezel from this black area to somewhere on the screen, the Playbook will also fire up swipe start events, and we can use those swipe start events in some kind of unique ways, because the swipe start event begins at the very point when we start to swipe down. So it doesn't actually require an entire gesture to regi register, because we can just use that from the top here. So I've wired up an application, uh, a oops, let me minimize this, using Flex Hero, and I've used Flex Hero because it's got the View Navigator built in, and the View Navigator will let me move kind of easily between views or backwards and forwards. And so what I wanted to do was use the swipe start event to calculate which direction the user is moving across this top bezel and then change my application accordingly. So if we go to Flash Builder here, uh, I've got this QNX swipe events MXML file, just the root file of my mobile application. And you see the first thing that I'm doing when the application is finished creating itself is registering an event listener, in this case the swipe start event. So not swipe down, but swipe, swipe start. Once that swipe start happens, I'm going to add a mouse down and mouse up event listener on the stage. Now I do that for a couple of reasons. One, the swipe start event doesn't actually give me any coordinates for the mouse. So I register the mouse down listener, which will fire as soon as the swipe starts, or as soon as we are in the middle of the, or beginning the swipe, which gives me, gives me my initial coordinates, the start x here, because I want to just track the x coordinate to see if we're swiping along the x plane. So once that swipe down, swipe start happens, I instantly hit that mouse down event and I can register the initial hit, or that x, y coordinate, that local x coordinate. Then, we want to listen for the mouse up event. The mouse up event will fire whenever we leave that swipe start event. So then I can make the diff take the the x coordinate there and figure out the difference between the mouse down event and the mouse up event to figure out which direction the user is moving in. And so the code here is just basically figuring out are we moving backwards or are we moving forwards and then how should we change the application accordingly. And then of course at the end we remove those event listeners so they're not going to get in the way of the rest of the application. Back to the simulator, we can see this in action. So here's my initial view, and the code is incredibly straightforward. I've got a quote unquote detail view which says view two, and my initial view here says view one. So using the code that I had before, figuring out that swipe start event, I can come back to the simulator. And if I move forward, we will move to view two. And if I move backwards, we'll move to view one. 
So I can just use that view navigator stack. I'm just po po popping or pushing views as they come with those gesture events. Now one caveat here is that this isn't necessarily going to be a typical use case for this top bezel. Uh, none of the applications that I've seen on the playbook have actually used any top bezel to move backwards or forwards. But if you make the gestures clear to your users, using this swipe start technique to figure out where the user is moving on that top bezel could be kind of a, a nice way to distinguish your application or make it unique in some way. The other caveat here is that in the simulator, there's no way to listen for the swipe down event and the swipe start event. You've got to listen for one or the other, and that may just be a bug in the simulator that I have, which is 0.9.2. In the real playbook, you may be able to listen for both of the events, but in the simulator, if you listen for, or if you add event listeners for both the swipe down and swipe start event, you'll never actually get the swipe down event. You'll only see the swipe start event. So they, you can't use both of them or can't check both of them. So hopefully that gives you some insight into how you can use the swipe events as part of the QNX application event class to either create some basic navigation items, like a menu, or create some kind of unique interactions where you can swipe along that top bezel. If you want additional information about the playbook, you can always check out my blog at digitalbackcountry.com, and I'm always happy to answer questions via email at ryan at adobe.com. Thank you very much.